Good morning, folks. We're starting with Antarctic sea ice. A few days into May now, we gather our April stats and discover yet another record high surface ice extent down south. The kicker, of course, is that it's heating from the underside and melting significantly. So we're getting the story that somehow our carbon emissions are mostly affecting the ice underneath. If we ignore the fact that the IPCC and other cryosphere scientists have known that's impossible and been stating the opposite since the 70s, we're still left asking, how much of that could be due to natural heat venting from the ocean floor? Turns out nobody can answer that because they're omitted from all models. That's a good read. And for those who have been here a while, want to go next level with what we're discovering, cloud fraction as a forcing element in GICs and other modeling is the primary modulator of warm and cold, which points again back to cosmic rays, their cloud formation, and the deluge of them to come if we enter solar grand minimum, the 70-year nap that appears all but certain this century. Yank up the wind map and head down south to watch a high off Uruguay spread the moisture north to the convergence over Brazil. We've got the next strong low about to crest Chile and Argentina. It's a much lighter day down under, but with the rain returning Monday. To analyze, Europe will actually start in the Pacific. Yes, the northern Pacific. Look at the pressure set up there driving warm, moist air due north into the Arctic Circle. It's clear that that drive is maintained directly through at this time, and the cooler air is heading down the other side, east of Greenland into the North Atlantic. Together, that spells quicker ice melt on one side and a slight delay today in any overt heat events planned for Northern Europe. Hungary and surrounding nations are hoping to avoid the thunderstorms they saw yesterday and today. Meanwhile, the primary low pressure cell is indeed a factor mostly for the Northern nations. Coming to the United States, where the lows have simply refused to budge. By this time, I'd have guessed they'd be at New England and Florida, but the central low pressure dominates with severe weather and snow on its leading and trailing convergences, respectively. I promised Jamal and Mike I'd do one contrail conditions review this week, so we can understand if the lines we saw in the sky were moisture or not. When it comes to the lower levels of the atmosphere, it's a very humid day for the east, most coming up right off the Gulf. It does extend back west over Washington and Oregon, fading slightly up through the primary trail layers. Southwest appears ultra dry until you hit the jet stream and discover an atmospheric stream you didn't know was there. The X's mark the low contrail forecast where there's no good reason to see a checkerboard above. Okay, so we're looking at what appears to be nothing. Nothing but the birth of some sunspots. This traditional spreading region already has beta class magnetics, but he formed out ahead of the larger northern grouping and is already turning out of sight. That big grouping up north has indeed fallen silent in a hint towards grand minimum, but I see the delta class building back this morning. Could pop big if that continues. Focuses on the southern incomers, but just moderately as they're working to be magnetically complex, just lacking the size for larger flaring. Dark southern coronal hole is exiting to the right with the next one coming in on the equator. Earthquake condition index raised into A range yesterday after seeing some major power to it, but overnight the force began to wane and we're back down out of the top watch zone. This could change at any moment today as the fields are in high flux. Perhaps this is the completion of the solar polar flip as wide reports of its completion already are patently false with our latest data showing incompletion only a month ago. North must be positive this coming cycle. The flaring is weak. The northern delta is our best hope for more. We're taking some density followed by a speed ramp this morning in what could be the coronal hole particle stream. Minor instability thus far, but auroras are expected. Lastly, Lockheed. The moment the sunspot pulse was shared with everyone, you drop the shot sequencing back to once a minute on sunspots, making the two to three minute cycle impossible to peg. Disappointing. Current conditions and shots of our start to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.